Now that you have your initial setup completed, go back to the windowwork.com sign in page. Go up here and click sign in. Put in your username and your password that you set up for yourself. And this is the home page that you'll be brought to as a manager. First thing I would do is go to schedules and set up some shifts. If you're not in calendar view up here, you can pick your different schedule views. I would pick the calendar view and then pick add shifts. And select first select a position. We're going to add some shifts for a receptionist. Let's add some 7.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. shifts. And these are all during the week and on Saturday. We're going to leave this button checked off because it will automatically calculate the hours between 7.30 and 1. You can pick a color for the shift. Let's pick brown. We want one receptionist. If you have two receptionists filling that shift, you can press put the number two in here. And we'll call it the description receptionist front. Then click add this shift. You can go ahead and do this for uh, the other positions until you have all your shifts put in. After we have put all our shifts in, go ahead and click the Done button. And here we have our schedule. The next step is to go to our Employees screen by clicking on Employees up here. And I just click at the top Employees. And it lists your employees. What we want to do is most of the time your employees will have individual preferences. You know, maybe Jackie always has Wednesdays off or, or Jackie has um, Tuesday morning off. Uh, right now we have everybody available any hour of the day, all day long. But what I'm going to do is edit uh, Jackie's position click right here and then we will show that she will make it so that she's not available on Wednesday mornings. This brings up uh, Jackie's employee screen. We'll set her repeating weekly preferences. This button right here and I'll click on it. And with this little paintbrush tool, I'm going to red out the area at the times that she cannot work. So I'm going to click on that. And then let's say that Jackie cannot work from Wednesday seven to one p.m. And then we're going to go down to the right here and save the changes. And I do this just to illustrate the way the calendar autofill tool works. Because what we're going to do now is go back to the schedule. I happen to like calendar view, so I'm staying on calendar view. And we're going to put, we're going to click autofill. You can actually manually fulfill, fill all these positions. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of managers like to keep uh, schedule preferences in their head, and that's fine. The nice thing again about this tool is it'll add the hours up, and it, you can see when someone's got too many hours or over 40, that sort of thing. But um, we're going to go ahead and click the autofill tool right here and see what happens. 
And remember, Jackie is not to be scheduled Wednesday morning. So we click on that tool and it asks us how we want to do it. In the employee preferences area, you can actually set different groups. Uh, you know, if it, you have an employee that um, is, has seniority or is in a higher priority group, then you can actually set let, let um, tend to fill by that employee's preferences first over another one. Uh, seniority, it'll do it'll use the higher date uh, and set a preference for the person that's been there long, longest. Uh, employees themselves can actually go into, once they log into their side of things, they can actually put in what hours they prefer and what hours they, they uh, dislike working. It won't, it won't uh, exclude them from working during their, say, dislike hours, but it'll try to take that into account. If it's becoming difficult to do this because the computer is not always perfect, then you can actually check that box off so it won't um, go to, according to employee preferences. But we'll leave it unchecked for now. And then uh, we'll go ahead and continue and click Yes, Autofill the Schedule. And what it says is we've got all the shifts filled. We've got 90 hours total. Everyone has some hours. We're going to close this out. And just to check, receptionist Jackie's not on Wednesday, and it won't it won't do it because it won't ever schedule her on Wednesday because we've put her off on Wednesday mornings. But now we have a schedule, and uh, you're on your way to making life a whole lot easier to, uh, to planning your uh, your weekly staff schedule. Now there's one more thing to do. Once your employees are all set up in this program and you click publish, then they will get sent the schedule and they will now be able to view it. This allows you to actually go into different shifts and change things around uh, while it's under unpublished. And then when you're ready to set it in stone and send it out to your employees, you can click publish. And we'll go ahead and do that. Publish right here, and here we are. Now there are a couple more things that you need to know about before you get started using this this software. And the the first thing is your employees have to have a way of getting in. So go to employees, click on the employee button again, and click on each of the employees that you've set up. And again, you can do this as you set up each each employee, but we're going to go ahead and click on the edit button for Alice. And her screen comes up. And let's look at this in a little more detail. You can, you can actually set how many hours Alice has. Maybe she only wants to work 20, so you can put 20 there. Uh, this is the priority groups we're talking about. Maybe Alice is a uh, second tier employee. You can Click that. Um, you can put the pay rate uh, in here. It'll only be visible to, to managers. Uh, that's up to you. I usually leave all this information blank and let the employee fill it up. And uh, unless you want the pay rate in there, the advantage of doing the pay rate per hour is you can actually try to schedule so that the computer picks people that are going to be less expensive than others. But uh, uh, for our purposes, we've never seen need to actually differentiate that way. But Alice needs to have a way of signing in. So we can do two things. If you know her email address and you can enter it in here, then we can just email her sign-in instructions. What I do is I go ahead and print the sign-in instructions, give the sheet of paper to Alice, let her log on with her temporary user ID, which is this number here, and follow the instructions on the sheet and then she can set all her information in herself and including her email address and the importance of having all your employees have an email address on board 
is that they can get all of their schedule notifications by email forwarded to whatever, you know, Yahoo or Gmail or other email address that they have. Um, if they don't have internet at home and they want to use the internet at work just to sign into this program so they can get information that way, that's fine too. We have a couple employees that do not have internet at home. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and print the sign instructions by clicking up here on the right. And this is what we get. And we'll go ahead and print it. And once it prints, I'll hand this information to Alice. And it has instructions for what she should do. And she'll be able to pick her own sign-in ID and user password just like we did.